Good morning. Like many of you, when I was a child, my parents took me to Disney World. And I got to meet the characters and the adventures and places from my imagination became real. I was literally transported into another world. But what I remember most of all to this day from that trip was under the geodesic dome where there was a special exhibit. It was a behind the scenes look at how they combined creative skills of the world's best animators, illustrators, costume designers, craftsmen, and technical know-how of cutting-edge engineers, roboticists, programmers to make all of these fantastic experiences. They called them Imagineers, and I was captivated. My parents could not drag me away, and I knew what I wanted to be when I grew up. My name is Matthias Duarte, and today I'm excited to work at Google because we are committed to helping designers and developers make the worlds of their imagination real. Over the last 10 years, I've worked at a lot of different parts of Google, on Android, from Gingerbread to KitKat, on the very first voice interfaces that would become the Google Assistant, uh, had a chance to help refresh the Google logo, and work on material design and eventually Google material, which refreshed all of Google's products. The type of work that I've had a chance to focus on we call it UX, UI, front end, creative coding, whatever you want to call it. It's really no different than those Disney Imagineers. We are blending artistry and technology to create completely new experiences, digital worlds. Now, these digital realities are sometimes flights of fancy, but they're also the virtual places where we do business, where we shop, how we find our way around the real world, how we connect to other people. And Google wants to help you bring those worlds of your imagination to reality. Just like Disney Imagineers, it takes the very best creatives and the most talented programmers. That's why I'm excited to see all of you here, because you are skilled, creative, passionate, clever. But we know this kind of work is not easy. In fact, it's never been easy. Not from the very earliest days of our industry has it been easy. If you think back, what is that first most inspiring milestone for UX, for great, delightful digital experiences? What comes to mind? Is it the Macintosh? The Xerox Park Alto? Maybe some of you are thinking of Douglas Engelbert's mouse. Um, I like to think of the PDP-1 way back, specifically Space War. This is often considered the very first video game. Um, and despite the monochrome display, there's a real careful attention to detail in how these rockets are rendered. Now, there was a problem in the very first versions of Space War that is often overlooked, which is that it's hard to play the game if you can't tell how your rocket ship is moving. And that rocket ship moving across that empty black screen is hard to understand. The human eye perceives motion relative to other objects. So the creators figured out how to add a star field that was really required creativity, because it was pushing that machine to its limits, as, as hard as it is to believe. Um, they worked within the constraints of the program. And the result was thematic, it was subtle, and it was hugely ergonomic. And it's that kind of problem that, for me, exemplifies what is hard about our work, but also what's really fun about our work, taking insight about cognition and perception and combining it with artistry and pushing technology to the limits, honestly. Now, how much time do we actually get to spend on those fun problems? 
I see teams struggle just simply to visualize solutions, to align on solutions across the team, to deploy the solutions without like really important nuances falling between the cracks, and be overwhelmed by all of the different platforms and requirements that they have to handle. Well, Google is here to help with tools, resources, technologies that help you worry about the problems you find fun. And I'm excited this morning to share some of our current and our future investments. Now, you're probably not surprised that I'm going to start talking about material design. In 2014, we introduced material uh, with design guidelines that were cross-platform, covering web, Android, and iOS. And the idea was to help designers build, the same, build on the same foundations that were trusted by billions of Google users. And we also started providing components that, uh, for each of those platforms that would help engineers quickly assemble those designs with fidelity, with accessibility, uh, with internationalization baked in, so that designers and developers could focus on the parts they found fun. In 2018, we introduced material theming. Now, material theming helps you build a complete design system that is based on the same foundation that unifies Google's products, but wholly customized for you, for your brand, for your look and feel. Instead of having to painfully tweak each widget, you customize them with high-level style parameters. And design choices are made consistent, not just within a product, but perhaps across a family of products you produce. And it's good not just for your products, but for your teams, because Everyone can work with the same styles within the, the system itself. It's formally encoded. Now we built material theming, so it scales with you, and it's easy to uh, onboard. Uh, material widgets help you build the, the building blocks of your app, and then you use theming to tailor the experience um, as you want to. And Lyft was one of our launch partners. They used the theming system and our components to make something that I think is really iconic for them. Material is not here to constrain your creativity, but to give you a head start, to eliminate any of the work that you don't find fun. If you stick around till uh, 12.20, Yasmin will be here to tell you how to get the most out of material theming for your projects in Flutter. Um, now, second, I do want to talk about Flutter. It's why you're all here. Um, and it's another commitment that Google is making towards helping you. Um, I've personally been a huge fan since the very beginning. I've been wowed by its impact, and Tim is going to tell you more about momentum. Um, but I have a personal testimony I want to share about how easy it is to use and what the value of that rapid, instant feedback it brings. On my team, I've seen more people uh, in, become full-fledged prototypers um, and start to play with becoming uh, front-end developers using Flutter. It was, it, it, it was a doorway that opened for them. And that is, is hugely inspiring to me. Now, since the pre-beta, uh, Material has been a close partner with Flutter. Flutter has pixel-perfect uh, implementations of Material, and Material components are the default UI library in Flutter, which means nearly all of the apps made with Flutter today are built with Material components. Um, and of course, all of Google's Flutter apps uh, which there will be more to come. Our team has been delighted at how easy it is to faithfully bring quality and nuance that we need in Material to our Flutter implementations. Flutter's architecture has made it really easy for us to do things like the complex composed lists or capture the nuance of the collapse animation in the flexible app bar headers. Um, Flutter made it practically automatic to add animations to layout transforms like we have in the fab bottom bar. Um, makes it really easy to add custom components like the pill tab selectors or the bottom sheet transitions. And of course, Flutter made it easy to capture the nuances uh, that research shows are essential to usability, like you see in the text field labels. 
Now, we've also brought material theming to Flutter, and the inherited widget pattern means material theming can be ubiquitous in your Flutter apps. Every material component has theming baked in. If you change a color scheme or text scheme or border uh, style, you see it everywhere. Um, most of all, the themed widgets pair really nicely with your custom ones. So you can uh, make them consume the theme and keep every style tweak in your project in sync. And Material is betting really hard on Flutter. We have our own dedicated team of Flutter component engineers, um, and they are so passionate that they make sure the, designer, uh, the latest designs get to Flutter so fast that that happens sometimes before we even have a chance to update our guidelines. We've recently doubled the size of our Flutter partner team, and we're going to continue to work really closely with the core Flutter team. We're working on continuous enhancements. We're going to bring the newest material themes as the default for new Flutter apps. We're updating the naming taxonomy, and we're going to continue to make sure our APIs are as easy and ergonomic for all of you for the latest versions of Material as they were for the first ones. I hope it's clear that Flutter and Material are not just two projects that work well side by side, but they're part of what Google sees as a suite of solutions that we're investing in. And together, they're here to help you make your imagination real, faster, easier. Now, Flutter and Material are going to get a little bit better with a third investment from Google today. Um, it's easy to forget that behind all of the animations and the beautiful images, most UI is still primarily text. And big brands invest in expressive type for that reason. Now, one of Google's oldest investments in creativity and accessibility launched in 2010 with an open source catalog of hundreds of beautiful typefaces. Google Fonts gave everyone power to use the perfect type anywhere. And you can see these fonts all over the web in places like Williams-Sonoma and Ikea and Cole Haan and Pottery Barn and countless others, uh, almost literally countless, because our global scale font-serving infrastructure is so powerful, so useful, so popular, that to date, we have served 34 trillion fonts. That's, <laughs> uh, that's a big number. Thank you. Um, every two seconds, we fulfill another 1 million font requests today. That's the time it takes for me to say, Google Fonts for Flutter, that's another million. And today, I'm happy to announce Google Fonts for Flutter. <laughs> it is now easy to get custom fonts into your Flutter app. Uh, after importing the package, you'll get autocomplete suggestions directly from Google Font servers. Um, it'll download the fonts, add it to your app for you. And with font reload, um, this kind of, uh, with the hot reload, yeah, call it font reload. I like that. Um, but it's like practically designing right in the app, right? That is so cool. Uh, Google Fonts for Flutter is dynamic and cached, which is great if you have a content-rich product, right, which always wants to pair the perfect typeface with different articles or different pieces of content. Um, but that same dynamic approach is also really useful for every developer who cares about their app size. And you all do care about your app size, right? Um, using our dynamic font serving can help you make sure you only include the fonts that your users need when they need them and no more. Um, and Google Fonts is available today on pub.dev. Google Fonts, Material, and Flutter are here to help you make more beautiful, more usable digital worlds today. And I cannot wait to see your imaginations come to life with them. But all of this is just the beginning. Google will continue to invest. And honestly, we think we need to invest, because we're on the cusp of some really transformative changes in our digital world. Old screens are not going away, and new screens are being added all the time, and devices without screens. Users want to experience your products, your services, and brands across all of them. 
We think of this as a world of ambient computing, which is going to require us to stop thinking about device first and start thinking about the user first and their experience first. We're going to have to design cohesively for the users no matter where they are. And you see a little bit of this in our smart display devices, where uh, Google has chosen Flutter for its flexibility and power, um, and it as a beautiful expression of Google material in a totally new type of display. Um, you see this in our continued commitment to desktop applications. Um, material is rolling out new patterns with rich controls and even denser layouts. And yes, you can expect these to be available in Flutter for desktop. We are excited about this ambient future. And we're excited to see how we can help. We're experimenting with even more audacious ways that we can help you focus on the user and not the device. Now, I'm going to show you some ideas that are not yet ready, but they show you the kinds of problems that we want to help you with in the future. It's really frustrating how designers and developers continuously struggle with handoff headaches. Um, there's a lot of amazing progress, but could we go further? Could we have a, a real WYSIWYG experience where we can manipulate a complete production UI, where we're manipulating the actual widgets and the custom code that's actually used at runtime, and save that UI as a source file that can be checked into a build directly? Wouldn't that be cool? And here you see one of our experiments doing just that visually changing a layout element inside a complex Flutter widget hierarchy of a full UI while preserving fully functional data bindings, and then we'll update it with Hot Reload. This is using Flutter both as an engine for uh, an editing environment and as a runtime to deploy. Does that seem exciting? I think it's exciting. Another challenge of this ambient future is the sheer logistics of deploying a coherent experience across all these services, across multiple teams. Could we have a single piece of UI code that describes all of the different bespoke layouts a program might run on? Wouldn't that be cool? And here you see an experiment where a series of unique layouts composed of common elements with data bindings themselves are dynamically reconfigured according to a partition map. And this is saved as a single Flutter UI, going beyond responsive to a truly adaptive single source. Would that be helpful? Yeah. I hope so. Now, these two experiments are very early days, but I find them really exciting. And I'm sharing them, even though they're early, to show the kinds of investments that we're making across Flutter, across Material, across all of Google. We know it's really hard work to bring that best of creativity and technology together. We know it's hard to get to the fun part of making your digital worlds real, but we're committed to helping you in that journey. I'm personally really passionate about this mission. This mission is why I feel like I do have my childhood dream job. And I think that mission is one that unites all of us here. We are all here because we believe we can make our imaginations real. Thank you.